right. Is it stout? Stouty. Stouty? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, again, Miss Stouty, I, I appreciate you being willing to come down and speak with us. Mm -hmm. You're very helpful on your part. I'm trying to be. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, don't I'll, know what I can tell you. Well, okay. Well, that's what we're going to try and get figured out. Um, obviously, like I told you at the house, it's, we got the call about Sarah and, and her condition. But you say she's doing better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, when did all this come about? Uh... The woman you see being interviewed by the police is mother of three, Diane Stoudy. Diane's eldest daughter, Sarah, who was 23 at the time, had been taken to the hospital after they found her unresponsive in her bed. She started feeling sick Saturday, you know, just a mild this headache. Past, this yeah, past Saturday? This past, well, it's been a whole week. Oh, so, okay. how, how did all that come about? She started, Saturday she complained of a little headache, mm -hmm. and she was, her stomach was upset, and she threw up a couple of times. And that was it. And then, her, her normal routine is she stays up all night and sleeps during the day. So I didn't think any about it until Sunday afternoon, and then I couldn't get her to wake up. She didn't respond to me, so we took her to the emergency room. Okay. Diane will begin to explain the events leading up to bringing her daughter to the hospital. What she doesn't know is the detective knows much more than she thinks he does. So you on Saturday then, you said she was having some headaches and throwing up. Uh huh. But it wasn't that bad. Yeah, I that. mean, I've seen the flu bug worse. Okay. So I, I didn't think that much about it. About what time was that on Saturday? Oh, that was in the afternoon. Okay. And then, do you remember what about what time it was that she went to bed? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I, I really don't know because I, I go to bed at 10 okay. at night and she's usually still up. Okay. And then you woke up Sunday morning. Morning. And she was asleep. Okay. Then what happened? Um, me and the other girls went to church and we left her sleeping. Okay. And then I came home and she was still sleeping. And then maybe a couple hours later, I went to check on her and we just couldn't get her to respond or answer or anything. Okay. So you brought her to the ER, yeah. and that was Sunday. That at was Sunday night. Um, I want to say afternoon. Afternoon. It was still daylight. Okay. Okay. So after you get home from church, you go in to check on her. She's still uh -huh. asleep, but she just will not respond. Right. She's completely unresponsive. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. And um, what time about was it that you got home from church? Uh, I want to say around twelve thirty. Okay. And then. Sometime, you say, in the afternoon, it was still light out. Do you mm -hmm. remember about what time it was that you took her to the oh, ER? Gosh. Maybe three-ish. Okay. Something like that. All right. She was is she still unresponsive at that point? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. I mean, we, we literally had to, Rachel and I had to carry her. Oh, we wow. We carried her to the car. Okay. All right. And it's like, okay, this is not good. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? It's like something's wrong. Mm-hmm. All right. And what did they what did they say at the hospital? Uh, basically, she was as sick as sick could get. But no idea what it was. We had no clue. Still, don't really have a clue. I mean, with, with her medical background, she's bipolar. Okay. My first thing is, did she get into something? You know, did she try to overdose or something? And then when I got home from the ER, I checked her medicine and. She had plenty of pills left, so I don't think she OD'd her medicine, but I have no clue. Okay. Diane tries to push the narrative that her daughter is mentally ill and is not beyond harming herself. The information she gives the detective is true, and it could explain Sarah's symptoms. The problem is, this isn't the first time a family member has had these exact symptoms. In fact, over the past year, Diane has lost a husband and a 22-year-old son who had both experienced the same symptoms right before they passed away. I really don't. So it didn't look like to you then that she would have overdosed? No, and then I, I, you know, when I'm telling the ER 
folks, you know, this is her history. And I know they were probably running every test under the sun on her, and they said nothing, they, they couldn't figure it out either. Okay. If she wouldn't have, obviously because the pills were there, if she wouldn't have overdosed on pills, even what else she might have done? She's talked about in the past about cutting her wrist, um, but as far as other ways, I have no clue. Okay, She's obviously really never she said anything. But, but obviously she didn't cut her wrist. No, yeah, okay. no. So you don't know how else she might have done it? No. Okay. I mean, I if she did find something to take, I have no clue. Okay. You have any idea what it would be that she'd find to take? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I mean, I don't... As far as pills, I don't have much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Other, you know, Tylenol, Motrin, that type mm -hmm. of stuff, but... Anything else, maybe besides pills, or that she could do? Well, if she got into like cleaners and stuff like that, but I don't know. I can't really picture her doing that. Okay. You don't. So you don't think she's the type of person that would try to harm herself, or? I really don't know. I'm. I don't know. Okay. Part of me says yeah. Part of me says no. Has she, did she mention anything about, you know, wanting to harm herself or no. nothing at all? No. Okay. No. I, I know she had been not sleeping as good as she's been in the past, but other than that, I hadn't really noticed much change. Okay. But then, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's so subtle sometimes you just never know mm -hmm. what's going on. Sure. And it's tough because I, I try to give her her space, but yet I want to kind of know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you said you have other daughters. Mm -hmm. How many do you? Have? I have two others. How old are they? Uh, Twenty-two and eleven. Would they Would they know? Would um, Sarah have maybe said something to them about wanting to harm herself? I asked or? them, and they said they hadn't nothing. 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 Okay. So you don't think it was pills? You thought maybe she could have gotten into some cleaners or something? Yeah, because I, I know I have cleaners, and I don't what else is there? Yeah. Of all the possible scenarios, Diane mentions household cleaners. When the detective asks her to be more specific, she describes the possibilities in a joking manner. For most people, it would be very hard to find humor when they are describing possible ways their child has poisoned themselves. What kind of cleaners do you think it could have been that she would have... What do I have? I can't see her taking soap. <laughs> Yuck. Um, the general, you know, everyday cleaner. Well, I have some of that. What's, what would that be? Uh, what's the name of it? Lysol. Okay. I know I have that, but I don't. Could you, could you even hurt yourself from soap or Lysol? Do you know? I'm not. I have no clue. No clue. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't even think about right. I've just like never that. heard of anything like that, so I, I haven't either. It's like, but I, I guess I don't know. I guess if you took enough, something would do something. Mm -hmm. But I've never, I don't know. Okay. But she's, as far as you know, she hasn't mentioned anything at all to anybody about no. wanting to harm herself. So no. that would kind of surprise you. It, it, yeah. Okay. Hmm. And as far as you know, they still don't know anything at the hospital? No. No. Gosh. Other than whatever happened really did a number on her. What do you, what do you think? Sometimes a detective will ask a suspect what they think happened. This is a great question because the suspect will usually try to answer in a way that will guide the investigation to the outcome they have already planned. Their answer will usually be very close to the truth, but will lack specific details. I really don't know. I've, I've been trying to rack my brains trying to figure out what happened. So. And from what I understand, you you're um, in the medical field. Is mm -hmm. that... I'm a nurse. You're a nurse, okay. But I'm a cardiology mm -hmm. nurse. I know hearts. But... Yeah. 
Okay. Um, okay. And from what I understand too, um, I think you're pretty well respected in your profession. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And yeah. you, so you, is there anything from your knowledge? I know you say you, you deal with the heart and stuff, but from your knowledge, is there anything that you can think of that it could have been? Because obviously, from what we understand, you're pretty intelligent. Yeah. And you're, you know, I mean, this is. I a, try. Yeah. But I, I really can't think of anything. I mean, I don't know. Psych's not my thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, like, I, I understand that. That's a whole different realm, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, just... Yeah, I understand the psych part, but in terms of, like, medical condition-wise, yeah. is there anything medical, medical condition-wise that, that you... cause all this? The only thing I'm thinking in my mind is, unless it's an autoimmune something or the other, but I've never heard of that causing... You know, basically she had a total body collapse. Okay. I mean, all her organs were trying to fail, and it's like, I don't know if anything that would do all of that. Yeah. Maybe one thing, but not all of it. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense. Okay. If she did take some cleaners or something, uh -huh. could that, I mean, could that essentially... Well, I can see that hurting the kidneys, but that wouldn't cause her brain... I mean, she had a brain bleed. Oh, she had a brain yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's like, that's, I can't figure that one out. Hmm. Because I even asked, it's like, you're sure it's a bleed, not a stroke, you know, or a blood clot? Because that runs in my family, so. But they said it was a bleed, and it's like, what would do that? Strokes or blood clots run in your family? Uh -huh. But both or I'm sorry, strokes. Well, it's the same thing. Oh, okay. You okay. can you can throw a blood clot to the brain and that causes a stroke. Okay, and that runs in your family. Uh -huh. Like how far? Well, I've had a TIA. Well, I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, that's like a tra um, mini stroke. Okay. And then my mom had one, and her mom died of a stroke. Okay. But. Would it be common for somebody that her age though that? Because from my understanding, Sarah was in really good. Yeah, she was in good. I as mean, far as we know, she health, was in good in great health. Great physical health. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, and at her age, the only thing I can see is if she was on birth control pills, but she wasn't. The tests that were done on Sarah at the hospital all came up negative. This means that if she had been poisoned, it would have been done by someone who was familiar with chemicals in lab tests. Diane knows this, so whenever the detective tries to bring up her medical knowledge, she makes sure to shut it down. I mean, I, I keep thinking, what drug is there that would do that? Because it almost sounds like a drug overdose, but I can't think of what. And but her talk where did she came get back with, with absolutely nothing, nothing in her system. Nothing. Nothing. So we can eliminate that then. Yeah. What if the cleaners, if, if that was the case, would. That, I that, would think I would think even that something in there would show up. How know. would that show up? I don't I don't know mm -hmm. whatever chemicals are in there. Cuz I know it was negative on alcohol, so I know she didn't get into the beer. Mm -hmm. But is she much of a drinker? No. No. What about drug user? Is she much of a drug no, user? Not, Nothing that, not that, that you're that aware I know of. of. Okay. See, that makes me question. It's like, well, did she do something? Mm -hmm. And if she did, I'd sure as heck like to know what so I could prevent it again. <laughs> I can't go through this again. What do you mean? This can't go through been this rough. again? Oh, you mean this <laughs> whole ordeal? Okay, yeah. It's rough. I bet, especially since she almost I died. Know. Yeah. Diane shows no concern for Sarah. She explains that she wants to know what caused the situation so she can prevent it from happening again because she doesn't want to go through this again. Typically, a mother would be far more concerned about their daughter, who they almost lost, instead of how they are feeling. As the interrogation plays out, you will see that Diane continues to show very little concern for her daughter. Where are you a nurse at? Um, I work out of the house. I work for an insurance company. Oh, okay. 
What do you What do you do for um, I nurse review, for an insurance company? Uh huh. Yeah, I review claims. Oh, okay. Okay. How long have you done that? Uh, about twelve years. Wow. I love it. God, that's pretty good getting to work no, out of no the house thanks. too, no, right? I don't have to work holidays. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. You get to get to make your own schedule, or pretty much, yeah. We have flexible hours. Wow. Well, you can't beat that. Yeah. It's like yes. I wish I had flexible hours. <laughs> uh, you have any idea where we could, what we could look for in terms of? I mean. It's just so it sounds like it's just such a you know an odd deal anything at all that to give us some guidance to figure out you know what happened or any suggestions you could think of I really can't think of anything I mean I I really don't know does she work anywhere no no she's been supposedly trying to find a job but I don't think she's been trying that hard Pardon me real quick. I'll be right back. So far, Diane has done a good job pretending that she knows nothing about Sarah's hospitalization. The truth is, they know exactly what happened to Sarah, and they know that the same thing happened to Diane's husband Mark and son Sean. A year prior, Diane began spiking her husband's drinks with antifreeze. After he passed, medical examiners claimed that the cause of death was because of his unhealthy lifestyle. Six months later, Diane's son would also pass away, and his cause of death would also be from previous health conditions. It wasn't until Sarah was hospitalized that the detectives would put in a request for more tests to be done on the autopsies of Mark and Sean. These tests revealed the raw components of antifreeze. The police now have the cause of death, but they still need to get Diane to confess to the crime. Well, well, let me ask you this, because okay. from talking with the hospital, it sounds like they're doing a bunch of tests, and they're even sending some tests off to uh -huh. labs elsewhere. They mentioned the Mayo Clinic and, oh, wow. and possibly other places, mm -hmm. just the nature of this. Do you think there's going to be anything suspicious that, we, that they find in all these tests that they're going to be doing? I have no clue. Okay. Because I, I don't even I don't even know what to look for. What do you mean? Well, I mean, if if they're looking for some kind of a chemical that you may have taken, I can't think of what it would be to even know what tests they're doing. Because from Does that my make sense? well, I, I see from my understanding, it sounds like they're going to run a whole bunch of various chemical type yeah. tests possibly and, and just a whole bunch of other tests um, um, to see what was going on. Yeah. Um, if it would come back that there was something in there like that, how would you explain that? I don't know. Depends, I don't know. Depends on what, if, if something did show up, I'd have to figure out what it is. And then try and figure out where did it come from. Because I don't know. Okay. Do you know much about the autopsy process? Mm, a little bit. Okay. What did they tell you about Sean's autopsy? Um, that he had a congenital kidney defect. Um, that they found quite a bit of brain damage. I'd never heard of the word gliosis before. Um, they had found where he'd had his initial stroke and then there was evidence of seizures. Okay. Because we've s spoken with the medical examiner about that and I guess when they first did it they really didn't look too much into if there was any types of chemicals or anything mm -hmm. at all in his system or anything else like that but when we, we did talk to them they they did were, were able to tell us that they 
and just like with all autopsies, if you're familiar with those, they, you know, they take tissue samples and hair samples and all kinds of other samples and they yeah. basically keep them for a while. And fortunately, they still had a, have a bunch of his mm -hmm. stuff. And so they're gonna do a bunch of tests on his stuff as well, mm, okay. okay? So if his stuff were to come back with anything like that, something similar to maybe this, what Sarah's mm -hmm. might come back with, how would you explain that? I don't know. I really don't know. It, again, it depends on what shows up. And what do you think it might be? I don't know. I really don't know. I think there could be anything maybe malicious or suspicious in, involved with that? I can't think of that, you know. Would you be surprised if something like that came back? Yeah, Would you? I, I think so. I think I would be surprised. Okay. I mean, Why would you I be never, surprised? Well, I never anticipated anything showing up, mm -hmm. you know? You, you never anticipated anything showing up? Why, why, would, you, why, do you, why would you not well, anticipate anything showing up? Because I, I really don't know what... How can I say this? Makes sense. I really don't know. Like for instance, Sarah, I don't know what happened. Right. I, and and f as far as Sean, I, you know, I'm just taking their word that yeah. that's what happened. And I understand. And I think their initial, you know, because they didn't obviously go into a bunch of stuff. But mm -hmm. now after Sarah's condition, and there was no autopsy done on Mark, as as we know, but. You know, maybe from some samples that were taken initially, um, you know, not the autopsy, but just, you know, because I know Mark had some substance on his face and things like that. And from samples there, it's, is there any reason that from samples taken um, at the time of these that there may be some kind of correlation or some kind of link, anything that may be similar in, in, in those? I don't know. You, you don't know? No. And if there was? I understand you wouldn't know, but if, if, if there was, though, something similar amongst them. I'd have no, I, I have no clue. What would your explanation be, though? I don't know. What was Mark's life insurance policy like? Uh, he only had 20000 that was it. Okay. How about Sean? Sean only had 15. What about Sarah? Sarah only has 15, I believe. And Rachel? And Rachel has 15. And Brianna? Has 15. Okay. And you were able to get the, the money from Mark and Sean's, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. It took a while to so, yeah, but finally. You right. And what did you do with, with that money? Um, with Mark's, we were able to move into a better neighborhood. Right. How about Sean's? With Sean's, I haven't even... Right now, it's still in savings because I haven't quite figured out what to do yet. Okay. With some of it. What were your plans? Some things are... I'm thinking more of just paying off bills. Okay. What about Sarah's? If she passed, what was going to... I have no clue. Let's get back to the medical stuff, you know, because of the the samples from tissues and mm -hmm. and fluids and everything else that the hospital are doing with Sarah. 
And then since because of that, they're going to go back, obviously, like I told you, and reevaluate to Sean's autopsy and the samples that have been saved since then. And again, you know, Mark having the same, you know, same deal. So how would you explain, how would, what would your be, what would be your explanation if there's something in their samples that comes back as being, you know, as if there is some kind of chemical or something that shouldn't be there of that nature? I really don't know. I know Sean and Sarah were very close. Okay, what do you mean by that? Well, they they talked a lot together. But what would that have to do with, I, with having some kind know. of substance? What would that have to do with some kind of substance, though, that shouldn't be there? I don't being, know. Okay. Really, I don't know. Okay. What, you wouldn't have any kind of explanation for that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think they're going to come back with anything like that? I don't, I don't think so, but I don't know. And if they do? I'd have no clue. And you don't have any explanation as to why that would be? No. The detective asks Diane a hypothetical question. The question is meant to give her the chance to explain the evidence if any is found. Some people believe they are much smarter than the police and they can talk their way out of any situation. What they don't realize is that detectives are trained in interrogation techniques and it is their job to manipulate a suspect to get a confession. Diane is no different and she believes she can explain the hypothetical evidence. Oftentimes, you know, there, there's cases that come up that are similar to this where mm -hmm. people are harmed, you know, by other people and there's there's always a reason if somebody was to harm their you know let's if their deaths were because of something like that if somebody was to harm them why do you think that would be what would be the reason for the, for somebody to want to harm them i don't know about my kids but mark had a lot of weird friends well i don't know if i'd call them friends acquaintances he would you know they were into drugs and all that but that wouldn't surprise me but as far as my kids i can't imagine you can't imagine anybody trying to harm them did you ever have any suspicion with mark's death Not really. I wouldn't call it suspicion. I must, I was not surprised because he he would binge drink and. What was your his marriage like? Um. How can I say this? We were still married, but it was not what you call a good marriage. Mm -hmm. Have there been any infidelities on either side? He had. He had. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing then, just briefly, that he wasn't the best husband. Mm, probably not. Okay. Not not to society, no. What do you mean by that? Not to society. Well, he was running around, and he would drink and smoke pot and. So he wasn't a very good guy, is what Not, you're saying? Yeah. I know, you know, I've had friends who told me I should kick him out, but I couldn't find myself kicking him out. Why not? I was afraid he'd kill himself. Why is that, though? Why would he kill himself? Oh, he was bipolar, too.
And even though things were bad and he wasn't a good husband and you said he wasn't good for society, that you didn't want him to kill himself? Mm-hmm. Okay. Even with all his faults, I still loved him. Okay. And Sean, any reason for anybody to want to harm Sean? I can't think of that. No. The puzzle pieces begin to fall in place as Diane explains her relationship with her husband. She tells the detective that he didn't work and she supported the family by herself. He would spend his days playing music and drinking while she worked and took care of the children. The same thing would be said of Sean, who was disabled and required plenty of attention to get him through each day. Finally, there was Sarah, who spent her days sleeping and her nights hanging out with friends. Diane begged her to get a job and help the family, but she never did. With all of this information, the detective decides it's time to tell her the test results. Well, Ms. Tyler, there's, there's been some things that have come up. We've been investigating this for a while. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's been some things that have come up during the investigation. Some of it to do with some tests that have been done on Sarah. Okay. And then again, some of it from when we've started working with the doctors that had performed the autopsy. So there's some questions that need to be answered about about that. And I'm hoping that we can get an explanation because I know that you, um, from looking into this stuff and looking into you, I know that you are a, you know, that you're a God-fearing woman. You know, you're strong in the church. You know, very, very dedicated to the church. You're somebody that knows, um, you know, about the right thing and about God's way. Mm-hmm. I'm a believer myself, so I understand where you're coming from on that. Sometimes in life, there's things that happen or things that go on that may not, you know, good people don't normally always do but there's reasons for for sometimes people to slip up a little bit make a mistake every now and then you would agree with that right Mm -hmm. so here we are with this situation now where some stuff's been brought to our attention and I think you're a very good lady with with the right intentions right yeah you try I try and but you know sometimes you know everybody kind of reaches a, a tipping point or a breaking point and it gets gets to where you know again like I said that maybe certain decisions are made that normally wouldn't be made for that and with some of the stuff involved in these cases from what we've been looking at um, I think I think you're aware of, of why we're just why we're here. Maybe I don't know. I think you know what why we're here talking. And now is your chance to kind of help fill in, you know, because there are still are some questions about why things may have happened and. Mm-hmm that nature and, and this is your opportunity because you know people are going to be looking for some answers and they're going to want to know why and we're going to want to be able to go back to them and say this is it you know she's a good person you know but you know, but give them some kind of explanation as to why because I know that there's a reason you know maybe why some of this stuff did happen Sarah, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Did 
Could you get into something? Goodness, my stomach's rumbling. Let's get let's get past that thing. Okay, okay. let's let's talk about it because I think I think he you probably want to talk about it. You need to talk about it because, you know, you know when, when people, you know, do things, it's always good to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know that. And oftentimes the best way to ask for forgiveness is to, to talk about it and give an explanation as to why things happen. As far as... Sarah's a difficult child mm -hmm. to deal with. I understand. And I've been kind of putting pressure on her to, you know, you need to get out and get a job. Your college bills are coming due. I don't want to pay for them. I, you know, after all, you get tired of doing everything for your kids. And it's like, you need to step up and do it. as far as I don't know as far as did I do something to or I didn't do anything to or I mean I I guess I could have taken her to the ER sooner but I didn't know How would you explain if through everything that's been going on, because I've been involved in this investigation for a while now and I've been working with the hospital, mm -hmm. how would you explain, because the hospital has been, you know, like I said, working with me and you may not be privy to know everything that we've been discussing. Mm -hmm. How would you explain if something's been found that may indicate otherwise? I don't know. All I know is if she, I don't know. I know I didn't do anything. And if you did? I'm just telling you I didn't do anything. I mean, the only thing, maybe I could have taken her in sooner, but... Diane is close to giving her confession, so the detective uses another tried-and-true method. If a suspect is close to confessing, sometimes a detective will explain that they understand exactly why the crime was committed. Perhaps the suspect was overwhelmed, or it was done in the heat of a moment. Either way, the detective will sympathize with the suspect, then ask if they want to look like a monster to their friends and family. If the suspect feels like they have most likely been caught, this question will make them think it is better for them to confess so they will look less like a monster and more like someone who just had a mental break. Diane, here's the deal. I'm here to try to help you out with all this because I know... Because I need all the help I can. I, I understand. I understand. I, I really do. And I know that this is... I know because you're a good person, I know that this is tearing you up, that this is bothering you. I truly understand that, but I'm here to help you out because I know that you don't want, because of you being a good person, you don't want everybody out here when this all mm -hmm. comes out, you don't want them to, to think of you as a bad, evil type person, mm -hmm. because I know that that's not how you are, but with, uh, that's why I'm here to try to help you out, to give you the opportunity to, to say, because I think I know. I think I know why, and it's for some of the reasons we've already talked about. If I think it's just pushed to the brink, can't take it anymore. 
you know you're doing all this stuff for everybody you're working all the time you're paying the bills you're doing this you're doing that you can't get help no jobs you got all this other stuff all these other burdens coming upon you where all of us get to a point where we just say you know enough is enough and I understand that I understand that but you've got to you got to help me figure out. You got to tell me this stuff. You got to tell me why. That way we can get to that point. That's way when we can get it out there that you know what this isn't just about somebody that's bad and evil. You you want people to know that it's that's not what it is. It just gets to the point, Diane. It's just it's just the breaking point. All of us, every one of us, have it. That, that's it's it's just as simple as that, Diane. It's just we all have that. It just we get right there, and then I mean, all the burdens that you have to have on you. You know that I know that, and that's what I'm giving you the chance, Diane. That's why we're here today, is so you can tell me, so you can tell me, so we can get it all on the table. It'll be that weight that'll be lifted off your shoulders, because I know people that, especially good people like yourself that walk around and carry this kind of stuff, carry these kind of burdens. Um, so many times just talking about it, to get it out there and say, here's the deal, I did this because, because I had all this going. And then it'll just, it'll be a relief to be able to talk about it, to get it off your shoulders, and then to help with the forgiveness and the healing process. But you have to, you have to do it. That's why I'm here. You have to sit down, just like we're doing, and talk about it and get it all out there. You do know I'm that. You do. Know, I know. I know. I know you're afraid of going to jail, but that's that. You shouldn't even be thinking about that right now. I know, but that's how my mind works. I understand. I understand, but let's put that out of your mind because you shouldn't even be thinking about that. Okay. I understand you're afraid to go to jail. Well, we're not going to even think about that because that's got nothing to do with it. Now is your chance to to tell us why, and and to show some remorse and ask for forgiveness, and that way I can go to these other people and say, yeah. She made some mistakes and that was it. So tell me about it, Diane. There's a lot of arguments. And to put it really short and sweet, I knew they were drinking antifreeze. And I was so mad at him, I didn't want to take him in. I delayed. And why'd you delay? Because I was mad. And that would just eliminate those problems, wouldn't it? They wouldn't be there to nag you, to bug you, to talk bad to you, to be mean to you, to be disrespectful to you. That would just be a problem that's gone. Yeah. I guess you could say that, but, right. but Diane, problems never go away. Right. How'd you know they were drinking in a freeze, Diane? They told me. Diane. You gotta, you, I want you to understand this, okay? I want you to understand where we're at at this point, okay? Right now, because I, I know you're scared. I completely understand that. I, I 110% understand that you're scared. But Diane, right now is not the time to tell me things that aren't true. Because it all comes back to, again, when other people, not me, but when other people that are going to see this, look at this and go, did she come in and tell the truth? Or did she lie, 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 and lie? Okay? You have to understand there's going to be a lot of people that look at this, and you don't want them to see all these lies. You and I both know why you knew they were drinking antifreeze, and you need to tell me about that. And lying about it, Diane will not help you. You know that. You don't need me to tell you that. You need to... T I know how you knew they were drinking antifreeze. Then you need to tell me. How I knew they were drinking it? Because 
I saw them drinking it. You need to tell me the whole truth, Diane. And you know we're looking at each other eye to eye right now. You know that I know. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. I wouldn't have showed up on your door today. Mm -hmm. Because when we've been investigating for a while, and we had to make sure that everything was as it was appearing, that's why we waited. And then I showed up today to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Diane right now because you're a good person you're better than this people that come in here and are not completely truthful with me are the bad people mm -hmm. and you're not one of those we need to get past all this stuff I understand you're scared I completely understand that but we got to get past this Diane because there's gonna be lots of other people that see this and look at this and you got to tell the truth the whole truth I know why you need to tell it Why they were drinking it, or? I know how they were drinking it. Yeah. You need to tell the whole story, Diane. People will look at this, and you, and you have to understand, just as a, as a person on the outside, when you look at this, if you're sitting and you look, did this person come in and say, you know what, I'm sorry, what I did was wrong. And this is why I did it, and this is how I did it. And they they put it all out on the table to get it over with. Usually people look at that and go, you know what? They made a mistake. But they owned up to it, and they did the right thing. Or do you have somebody that comes in and tries to not tell the whole truth? that says this or that, but it's not the whole truth. And people know that. When then people see that, they go, you know what, she, she made some mistakes, but then she tried to not tell the whole truth about it. I'm not quite sure that person's as good as what we thought. So you have to understand that, Diane. You've got to tell me the whole truth because you know that I already know. But you've got to tell me how, how all this started, when it started, why it started. Because you're going to want people to see that you're remorseful and that, you know, you're sorry for what you did. And that you've asked for forgiveness. Diane, you knew that they were drinking antifreeze. Mm -hmm. You knew that. They didn't. We both know that. You knew, Diane, that they were drinking antifreeze because you were giving it to them. Just, at, just like we talked, were you just at the breaking point? Yeah. I didn't know what else to do. Diane finally confesses to the crime. It turns out she did not work alone. Her daughter, Rachel, who she got along with, had helped her spike the drinks of their family members. At first, they interviewed Rachel and she denied any involvement, but after they searched the home, they found Rachel's journal. Written inside was the evidence that she had helped her mother with all three family members. We will provide Rachel's interview as well as the extended interview of Diane on our second channel, Red Tree Stories. How long had you been giving them the antifreeze before they finally got, like before Sean passed and before 
Sarah got to the point that she was. Maybe a couple of days. And what were you putting it in? Coca-Cola. What else? I think that was it. How much would you put in? I don't know. Just a little bit. And why just a little bit? I, I didn't want to hurt them. So you pour them the coke and then while you pour them the coke that's when you put the antifreeze in the coke okay how long did you think it would take to before they finally would pass i had no clue when they weren't passing right away did you eventually start to give them more and more i may have How, how often? Was this was this every day? Or how many times a day, I guess I should say? Once a day. Once a day? Yeah. And you say it started out with a couple tablespoons, but then when it wasn't killing them, then it, it maybe it moved on to just a little bit more and more? Maybe. I don't remember. How long ago did you start with Sarah to give her the antifreeze? weeks ago. Okay. Rachel and Diane would be charged for their crimes. Rachel would testify against her mother and receive life in prison with the possibility of parole after 42 years. Diane would also receive life in prison, but her sentence would not come with parole. Sarah would recover but would sustain permanent damage and she is currently in assisted living. Diana said she was sorry for what she did, but now claims that she played no part at all. According to the detective on the case, he states that there is nothing whatsoever to show that anybody was involved in this case other than those mentioned already. Again, this all got started. You're saying Mark is the first one. There's nobody before Mark. Not in your past life or not in... Okay, Mark's the first one. And it just got started. You said you hated his guts and... I just you couldn't take it couldn't anymore. take it anymore. And so you did some research on the internet about antifreeze poisoning. You were aware of, you know, the taste and things of that nature, like you said. Then you ordered some antifreeze, and then you you gave it to him for a few <coughs> few days before it finally started to kick in and work. Okay. And then with Sh with Sean, you said you just again we talked about he just became such a pest and bothering you, always interfering, things of that nature, and. Um, you said it took a couple days, right? A couple before it started to kick in on him. And then with Sarah, you talked about, you know, she, she wasn't getting a job and then she had these student loans and you were gonna end up having to pay for them. She wasn't working and you said you guys argued a lot. Was there anything else more or is that pretty much? That's pretty much. And you just had had it with her as well. Okay, and then you said it took about four days before it started to work on her. Okay, and there's, you didn't use anything, just antifreeze, there's nothing else at all. Okay. So if you can stand up for us, we're going to have to put some handcuffs on you. We're not going to put them on tight, but I'd have to have you put your hands on your back. Formalities. Yeah, it is. And I'm, again, my name's Detective McKenna, so if you think of something tonight or tomorrow morning that you think that you need to tell me about, you know, you, you can ask them to speak with me and they'll get a hold of me at the gym, okay? Thank you for being so decent with me, Diane. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time here on the Red Tree Crime YouTube channel.